Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Dennis. Today's video is going to be the Riven E12. It's a new product, just coming on the market. What makes it unique is it has an RGB connector. So I did the H500 build recently, and it had the adapter, and it had the extra plug. So this is going to be pretty easy to, to install. We're going to go ahead, we're going to install it, we're going to unbox it first, and have a look at it, see what's new, what's old, see if there's an adapter or anything like that in the box, and I'll show you what it looks like. Before we get started with that, don't forget to hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell for future notifications, check out those affiliate links. Here we go. So having our first look, the Reven E12 RGB, uh, of course RGB indicating multicolors, has the RGB 4 pen header. And I'll show you how that connects in a little bit here. But first let's get the, everything out of the box. There's good padding on top. And of course you've got your manual here. Gonna tell you how to install everything, so we'll have a look at that maybe. So, getting into the box, you've got your fan right here. We'll have a look at that in a second, and of course, have our cooler. Oh, maybe that's not a fan, so you guys you have a fan here, unless of course it comes with two. So, there's one fan. Here's our look at our cooler. So, you got four heat pipes, and there's no thermal paste, it's just this piece of plastic over top the end of it. Aluminum foil uh, coils. All right, and of course, the Reva name on top, which does not look like it lights up. No. So, anyway, this was not inexpensive, it was like $32. So, I have the temps from before. So, we're going to have a look and see. Uh, what the temperature going to be compared with the stock cooler. Okay, so inside that box, there's just all your uh, connectors, everything is going to fasten it on. And of course, this is going to be the back plate you're going to be using. It works for Intel or AMD. Both are included in the package. So let's get to it and see how this is going to go together. Okay, so before I point out all the things that came in that little bag, I wanted to point out this right here. So you have two connectors on this fan that I didn't realize. So you've got a four pin, which is going to plug in where your CPU header is on your system. And then you've got your separate one for your RGB. So if you didn't have RGB, you're not going to get the colors obviously, but you could just run the fan and thereby you can still use the cooler. So just something I wanted to point out. So here's just a quick look at all our different parts that come in the package. Okay, you've got your different brackets, even included some thermal paste. Uh, all your connectors, uh, thumb screws, all that kind of good stuff. And they even gave you a couple extra uh, connectors for your fan. So if you want to put it on to do a push-pull configuration, you're going to be able to do that. Okay, so just to show you a little bit, I put one of these together just to show you how it goes. So you can see this one is basically the way it's going to be once it's on the back of your motherboard. So you're going to start off. You've got a black and a gray. See, it's easier to see the gray one. Now, this moves depending on which one you're doing. If it's an AMD or it's an AM4. So, choose your setting and then you're going to be good to go. That one down where I just moved it to, which is where it usually sits if it's loose, is the AM4. So, here's the way it works. Basically, let's go to the other side. You're going to take one of these, okay, right here. And you're going to fit it in this little slot. Okay? But it'll move back and forth, no big deal, until you secure it. So when you secure it, then you're going to take one of these. You're going to put it on here, over top. Okay, so. Now they only go on one way. So there, I just put the black one on. We're going to do the same thing on the other side here. And you can do it without even looking, really. We're going to take the gray one and slide it on. 
Now, you'll hear it click in place, and now they're all done. So, the reason I did this one is to show you. So, with this, before this goes on, you're just going to have the post, all right? So, then you're going to take these little black uh, extensions, if you will. And once it's on your motherboard, it's going to fit over top. And then you're just going to take these simple ones right here. And you're going to put it on top. And once it's secured, it's going to look like that. Okay? So, the only other thing you're going to need to know is what uh, bracket to use. So, it's going to be the longer ones. Okay, these ones right here. Okay, so it's going to go on like this. And, of course, then you're going to fasten it to on here. And then your cooler is going to be in place. But don't worry. I'm just trying to quickly show you that. And you'll see it all come together when I put it on the motherboard and actual installation. So all the rest of this, these little ones, these are for Intel. And, of course, it depends on which one you're doing, which piece you're going to need from these. These are going to be for your Intel. And, of course, these ones are for your Intel. The little short ones. All right, so we'll get in, we'll start installing it, and you can see better from what that's going to be. Okay, so we're doing an AM4 install, and right now I've taken everything away we don't need. This is everything we need for the AM4 install. I took off this and one of these from the little pegs here. Okay, so we're going to put this on the back of the system, and if you look at it, of course, this is going to be part going up through the holes in the back of your motherboard. And you'll know you got it the right way because the indentations here, that's for if you're doing an Intel install. Okay, so that's just a quick way of telling what you're doing here. So our next step is to remove the stock cooler that I already have on so that I can prepare everything to put this back plate on the system and get everything going. Okay, so the first thing you do before taking off a stock cooler is find out where you're plugged in and just pull out the little plug. Okay, just pull that out so that'll free up everything so when you lift it off, it'll come off. You've got your screws here. There's two in the front and two in the back. And all you're going to do is just go in here and you're going to loosen them off. Okay, it's going to make a little sound there. Don't we worry about that. And you're going to repeat that in all four corners. Now, once you've got all the screws off, it's going to be on there pretty tight, so don't worry about that too much. So you might have to move it back and forth a little bit, and then it will just pop up. All right, so you can see your thermal paste, good coverage, and it had pretty good coverage on here. So the next step is going to be to remove the thermal paste before we go ahead and put our back plate on. So, I don't know if you noticed it, as soon as I loosen these screws, the little um, back plate has dropped down. Now that's okay, because I've got it setting on a table, and it's just setting flush on the other side. But, since we're not going to use that anyway, that's not a big deal, we're just going to go ahead, put our bracket on, and we're going to put our new cooler on. So first we're going to remove the thermal paste, then we're going to have to reapply the thermal paste, Put our bracket up through, and I'll show you all those steps here in just a second. So I use rubbing alcohol, 95% ethanol, and I put that on some paper towel, and then I'm just going to clean off the thermal paste that's on the CPU. So I've already pre-moistened this. So you just want to kind of wipe it at first, just to try and get it off without like getting it around the edges. You don't want to... Uh, make a mess because you don't want any kind of shorting or anything like that. So you got to clean this off really carefully. You'll notice I got a little bit on there, but when we're all said and done, that'll be all cleaned off. Just wipe that real good. Make sure you get it off. Now the thermal paste I used before is non-conductive. So even if it gets on here a little bit, it's not going to be that big a deal. Okay, so all our thermal paste is now all cleaned off. And so now we have to remove that back plate that was on before. So I'm just going to turn it to the other side so you can see the back. 
and you'll see where the uh, new backplate is going to go in. Okay, so just to show you what was on there before, that you unscrewed from the other side, and then this had came off. Okay, so it just came out of those holes, and it fell down. You're not going to use this to put it back on. So we're going to put our bracket through these four holes. Okay, you're just going to line them up. Okay. Now you're going to have to hold this when you turn it around and put your other uh, CPU cooler on. Okay, so now you can see it's coming through the holes. You're going to put these on here. They should just set there. No, no real problem. Okay, so just... Whoop. You need these. Over top. And you have four of them. And now you're going to fasten that on with these little thumb screws. And you're going to do that in all four corners. Now, you're doing this while you're holding the bracket in the back. So, don't forget that. Now once you tighten one of them in place, it's going to kind of hold, hold it on for you. And then you can just go ahead and put the rest of your thumb screws in. And at this point you don't really need to hold the back anymore. Now be careful, you don't want to drop this into your motherboard. So take your time, there's no rush. And just finger tighten it, okay? Don't go to extremes. Just nice and tight with your thumb. All right. Now, we're going to install our CPU cooler, but I'm going to put the uh, computer case back on its side so you can see that better. Now, once you're at this point, you've got your thumb screws securing it. You can put your uh, back the side panel back on in the back because you don't need to get back in there again. Okay, so learn something from this is I left these two on just to hold the back plate in place and I took these two top screws here, I took them off. So I am going to take this and put it on separately the way they said to do it. I thought it would work the other way but it doesn't. So we're just going to fit it on here on both sides. And then I'm going to tighten it. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And so they're facing this way. The little bit raised part is right here. And then I did the exact same thing on this side. So I tightened them down by thumb. And then I just gave them a slight turn just to snug them down. And now we're going to apply our thermal paste. Put our cooler on. Use our thumb screws. Okay, these ones right here to fasten it down we're going to plug it in and hopefully everything's going to work so don't forget when you go to put your cpu cooler on you got this plastic right here make sure you take it and peel that off before you put that on okay so i'm going to do a thermal paste first and then i'm going to peel that off and set it on top okay there's a lot of different methods to applying a thermal paste so take the cap off. I like to use a little bit of an X factor, but depends on the piece. But I'm going to go this time just a bit like that. That's more than enough. So I'm just going to go with that. Might do a little bit here just to make sure I get good coverage. Now, that could be a little bit too much. Okay, make sure that's all off. There are many trains of thought on how to put this on. None of them are really wrong. So don't worry too much as long as you've got enough thermal paste to cover it. That will spread out when you apply the pressure and you'll get good coverage.
Okay, so like I said, I'm taking that plastic off of the CPU cooler now. Okay, so we're going to set this down and line it up with the holes as best we can. Okay, so I'm going to have to hold that in place until we get our thumb screw and fasten that in there. Now it's going to move around a little bit. Don't be too concerned with that. Okay, just get it in, line it up, and then tighten it. It is a bit tricky, to say the least. Now when you're doing this, I did have to apply a little bit of downward pressure so that the two pieces would meet up. And then just make sure it's good and tight. Not too tight, but make sure it's tight on both sides. And then once that's done, you're good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is put on our fan, hook it up to our CPU system header, and hook it up. Now in this case, because I have done a prior video, this one has an RGB adapter, if you will. And there's a connection on that to allow me to plug into it. Now, if you're doing this and you don't have any RGB in your system or anything like that, you're going to look for the RGB header on your motherboard. Now, in this case, it's an adapter, that, and I'm going to plug into that, and I will show you that. Okay, so at this point, I put on my fan. I'm going to say, to me, this is literally the hardest part of this whole thing. You have to hook your fans. Uh, I'll point to this one. might be able to see it better. There's a little hook. A loop put it in here put the other one on there and then all you're gonna do is pull them back and you're gonna line them up with this little notch and once you've lined that up on both sides that makes them in place and it's good it's good and firm now the trick with this particular fan is you want to have it facing so the air blows that way so if you're in question, on the top, I'm going to show you this here. you got this one that shows you the fan goes that way. And an yellow arrow here showing that the fan, the air rather, is going to blow that way. So it's going to push through your radiator, like your fins and all that kind of good stuff. And then your rear exhaust is going to pull it out. So basically you have a push-pull configuration. So I just thought I'd point that out. Yes, these little wires, biggest pain in the butt. They are going to be what's going to give you the most trouble, in my opinion. The rest, pretty simple, pretty easy. Hope I've explained it well. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the CPU to where I originally took the original CPU cooler out of. I'll show you where that's at. Okay, so I want to show you where to plug it in at. So as you can see, there's a CPU fan here and CPU optional fan. We're going to plug it in here. And all you're going to do is check. Make sure you line up that little divot with the little divot that's on the back here. It's four pin. So if you do that, it's going to line up no problem. It's going to go in and you'll be good to go. And that's all there is to it. So to make things a little bit cleaner, I just put a twist tie on here. And just nice that up. Kind of tucked it away in behind here. Um, so it doesn't look that bad. Now this cable for your RGB. Okay, you can see it's got the four pin. It's quite long. So my adapter is in the back. So I am going to have to open up my back after all. Um, to connect it. Because the adapter is actually hidden in the back of the case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll show you where I'm connecting it. And after that it's just a matter of firing it up and making sure everything went well and we'll check the temps see what they're at and because i've taken the temps from before and i'll see if they're any better or not so brought it out through here now this is our four pin now our adapter from the h500 case had the extra little thing on it so that's where it's going to plug into now the only thing you have to make sure there's a little arrow on here. Okay, that arrow has to line up the arrow on here so that you don't get your voltages wrong. So all I got to do is push that on 
It's going to line up pretty easy. And it clicks in place. Now I'm going to take a piece of uh, dress tie and I'm going to tie that off there just to make it a little bit nicer. And that'll be it. And then we'll turn it on. So I just wanted to show you how I cable rooted it in the back and what I connected it to. Now in your case, you may have uh, not used the RGB header, in which case you can just plug it in there. So because my color scheme was already set at red, it automatically picked up the software I was using and that there was an adapter added, which I showed you when I was doing in the back of the case. And now the fan is actually red. So I'm going to move it just to give you a better look. And there we go. So our system fans are red. Our RGB is red. But like always, we want to have a look at our temps. So I'm going to fire it up. And we're going to have a look. And see if it's working better than the stock cooler. One thing I can tell you that is definitely better right now. Is the fact that it is way quieter than the stock cooler was. I don't know why that stock cooler was as loud as it was. Usually they're not. But mine in particular just happened to be one of the bad ones, I guess. But my red memory, my red fans, everything is all coming together. I think it's looking pretty sharp. But I digress. Let's get on to checking the temps. So right now we're setting it idle. And it's not hitting too high of temperatures at all. But... That's not what we want to see. We want to start this. So let's start it up. Put it under a CPU load. And see where it goes. So it's at 100% load. So it's showing you the load here. Temperatures are over here. Okay, I was pointing down here before. So sorry about that. So right now it's hitting 55, 50. Uh, and actually that's better than our stock cooler too. Because um, we were getting at 74 degrees. 100% load before so if it's only going to go to 49 which is what it's at right now that's pretty impressive actually uh, it just goes to show you a, a good cooler or maybe any cooler who knows is always better than a stock cooler um, so I'm going to let this run for a good 5-6 minutes and we'll come back and show you what it is so we're still at 100% CPU utilization. We've been running that for about five and a half minutes. Our temperature high right now is hitting it at 57 with a low of 24, around 30 there. Um, but 57 is our high under 100% utilization CPU load. So pretty impressive actually. I'd say before I was getting 74 degrees as a high under load. So that's a uh, significant drop. So all in all, this cooler gets a thumbs up from me. It is a bit of a hassle to install. But I think they're all a hassle to install. So what do I know? So here's another look at it. Now I've only shown you the red. Um, you know, I mean, you can play with the different colors yourself all you want. There's, thank you, you can change anything. But if you want, I can do a quick look, little bit of that too. So here we go. So just something to point out. Under no load, on, like on the idle, we're hitting somewhere around 32 degrees. So again, that's pretty significant. So I just wanted to mention that before I showed you changing the colors here a little bit. So here's a look at it being green. And uh, well... There, pink, blue, oh, different shade of green. So you get the picture. So hope you like that. And hope you like the cooler. All right, everybody. So I hope you liked that video. If you have any questions about temps or anything like that, you want to know, shoot me a comment and ask away. I think overall, Reven has got a success on its hands. Um, it's a pretty new cooler, uh, not much information about it, other than what you get in the uh, box when you buy it. 
So I hope this helps you out if you've happened to buy it and you're trying to figure it all out. Um, it did take me a little while to kind of piece it all together, but it came together pretty good. The nice thing was, because I already had the RGB already working before, when I added that just to the adapter, automatically recognized it and just continued to work with everything else I had in the case without any issues whatsoever. Obviously the temps were way lower than they were on the stock cooler. To be anticipated and expected, but you know, you never know. Sometimes if you get a bad cooler, it could be much higher. So if you're having problems with your stock cooler and your temps are maybe too high, there's an, always an option you could try that. Uh, I mean, if it's under warranty, then maybe not. But uh, anyway, something to think about. If you like the video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell for future notifications. Don't forget to check out those affiliate links. One is TubeBuddy, one is Pro XPN. Both will help me out. Or just make a donation to the channel if you'd like uh, through PayPal or when I premiere these videos, uh, when they go kind of like a, a live stream basically, there's always a uh, super chat and you can join in and ask some questions there and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you for watching. Um, I can't tell you how happy I am. I'm over 2,000 subscribers and on my way up to getting more and I couldn't have got there without all of you. So I want to thank you very much. Really means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.